Hi, welcome to the garden today. And we are doing day four with Allie Martin from Heart and Soul Connected. And if, if you haven't seen Allie, I, I don't wonder what kind of rock you live under, but she has, she reaches out to a lot of different disciplines. And that's why I think it's great. When I did a bunch of different disciplines, I needed someone who could explain I Ching. She knew more about it, she certainly knew more about it than I knew. But I wanted, you know, it's, it's a chance for us to all learn. And as we've been going through the candles, we've been learning about different things. So say hi, Allie, and then we're going to light Hello, the candles. Hello, everybody. I'm happy to be here with you, Nancy. Thank you. Okay. We're going to look at the candles because mm -hmm. when I'm in this format, we can see them. And I have mine here. Mine are green. Just so okay, you know. cool. And mm -hmm. as you know, I always put a stone in the center of the candles that um, for each type. And the, today, this time, I'm using a Uper light. Ooh. And you can see how it glows. Yes, beautiful. These are found along uh, Lake Superior, and that's a certain kind of selenite that has a fluorescence in it, mm. and it's all tumbled up in that sort of granity looking rather, it's rather a plain looking stone, but it's just yeah. gorgeous when it's lit up, and it's kind of like us. Until we learn how to put the light on what we do, we don't glow. So with keeping that in mind, in this new year, 2022, 22 starting with the full moon we light these candles to extend to expand our vision and to give and receive heart-centered love for understanding in the coming times of change and today is day four so we got one two three and there's Allie's candle four <laughs> and um so, and as you each know, we, we let them burn while we're doing our show, and then we blow them out at the end, because otherwise you guys can spend a small fortune on candles. Guide our hearts and our awareness to the most beneficial path, individually and collectively, and find balance through the movement and the frequencies. And so, starting like that, I want to give them kind of a quick background and your background, and then we can talk about the different disciplines you've spoken with so um i've been on since about november but i've been studying a lot in the metaphysical area since about 1987 mm -hmm. um i uh spent some time in uh, through the different i don't know how to explain it uh elevations of metaphysics i guess mm -hmm. you know we, we went through all these different times but we weren't online but i learned different things during those different times mm -hmm. and now i feel prepared to share those things plus share and plus still learn things from others here and mm -hmm. i'm holding a golden healer yes oh that's I wonderful stone absolutely love and it's in the form of a heart which i absolutely love so yes uh, thank you so much and i have green candles today because um green resonates as well with the number four which is the heart chakra it also happens to be my universal number in numerology so it's your life path yeah, it's my life path. So I thought it was perfect that Nancy Jean asked me to come on the fourth day. So thank yes. you for asking. Well. And yes, I spent some time um, uh, working with some of the uh, mediums, with some of the readers, um, and uh, finding new people to introduce to the community. Mm -hmm. And I've had very, very nice uh, interactions with so many and learned so much from them. And um, I, you know, I just enjoy... Um, doing that and sharing on this uh youtube you know on the youtube channels with other people because i love collabs collabs are wonderful mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah yeah great of of all the okay you started did you start with cards or did you start with just mediumship or um when i started actually beautiful andrea from lilac landon told mm -hmm. me don't worry about what it is, just do it. Mm -hmm. And so I really started with just spirituality mm -hmm. and um, talking about things that have happened in my life and that sort of thing. Um, and then as time went on, I was able to go to a psychic class. I was able to go to a mediumship class. Um, I started pulling oracle cards because I I'm not, I don't really care for the tarot, but I love watching the people work mm -hmm. with the tarot. And then of course, uh, I love minerals and rocks and uh, studied those in the 90s, early mm -hmm. 90s, and 
Now there's, there seems to be so many different ones that we hadn't found at that time. You know, they were hiding away or else mm-hmm. they just were named something different. But yeah, I've done that. Some of the other disciplines that I have seen are the pendulum. You see mm-hmm. the pendulum. Um, I love rune work, which you can get in cards or you can get in stones. I have a couple of rune stones. I don't have them with me, but um, they're made. One of them was made by with amethyst. Yep. And one of them is made with all labradorite. And Mm -hmm. um, they're just nice to hold. They really are. They're they're really a lot of fun. Um, I ended up just buying myself some dowsing rods as well. Because mm-hmm. I just thought that would be fun to to tap into, but there you're right. We, when we had a talk before this, uh, there are so many different things out there that not everybody knows about yet, mm-hmm. including if I mention Bob, who does the Akashic Records. But you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people ha- aren't aware of him. Some of the newer people. Mm-hmm. So it's wonderful to bring all those kinds of people in from varied disciplines and have them, you know, share their knowledge and share because we all have something I think that's uh and, and you mentioned this something perhaps we're stronger at than mm-hmm. other things yeah so well, I think some of that's past life stuff that we just yeah. remember that's sometimes crazy. it's just because we've just done it for so long we do it um mm-hmm. because my background was cards reading tarot mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, eventually I learned numerology teaching tarot because if you learn one through nine and get that down, then you've yeah. got, you know, three quarters of the deck has gone. You're done. <laughs> you know, it's an easy way. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. And um, of, do you find that people have come from more one area than another in coming into the spiritual world or? You know what I'm finding over and over and over again is introverts Mm -hmm. who are being pushed sort of out of the nest Mm -hmm. and opening all these channels. I think, you know, there's, let's say if I interview 10 people, eight of them are introverts or they, Mm -hmm. you know, they really had a lot of problem turning it over to spirit and, and getting out there. And, And so it really doesn't matter which way they go with their channel, if it's cards, if it's, you know, if it's another another way of doing readings, what Lenormand or the Kippers or, you know, whatever it is, all of them, the biggest thing was they awoke into the idea that they need to share. And so that is the most astounding thing that when I ask, are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'm surprised by some of them, like Susan Lynn. And Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of other people, uh, people that have not yet had a channel that are working on that part of of mm-hmm. their, uh, personality in order to get on so yeah it's it's a fascinating and i did that uh series on resilience resilience right. during covid and fascism and it was amazing how many people you know came to came to this community came to our community on on including myself uh, because we needed something to hold on to you know right and so a lot of people that's where they began they didn't even have maybe an interest in cards or an interest in other things. They just knew they needed sustenance and they found that resilience by coming here and and spending some time with folks on channels. Yeah. Yeah. And the more you open yourself up to watch other people working, um, the more you'll figure out how you express, because that's what I find is, you know, people are like, well, why do you watch that? You know, you know how to do these things. And I'm like, no, I know how know I see the world, <laughs> but I don't know the vocabulary that everybody else has. And, you know, and it's extending and growing so much because in my conversations in the nine candles, I've run into people who said that they were not aware of a lot of these. They knew the shift was coming, but they had no idea. The shift was in power lines that go all around the world. And cosmic energy that's coming in from the sun i mean they're like whoa wait a minute and they said you know three years ago they wouldn't have been able to even hear that and understand it, it, that's very true uh, the, the vibration they were lower vibration it's all about looking at vibration i remember i think it was in 1995 or 6 i uh, went to sedona my brother went with me and he was very ill mm-hmm. and we went through the vortexes which could 
be considered like ley lines, you know, yeah. power sources. And my brother couldn't do much of anything. He had a tumor in his stomach and he was not able to walk. He was having problems breathing. He ended up walking through the vortexes and carrying out a crystal actually that he found. Mm -hmm. And he was even surprised. He said he felt great. It was like all that walking through that area just energized him. And I've heard that from a lot of people. And I don't know if that would have been the case if he hadn't accelerated at least a little bit at that point to be able to feel that energy in order to propel him forward. So. Yeah, places like Sedona's are what they call nodes in that world. Uh -huh. And okay. a lot of energy gathers there. And when it gathers there, it creates like a little tornado of energy, not even little, a big one. And a it's called one. a Taurus. It's a T-O-R-I-C-E. If you see it, it looks like a donut of energy and it's got a hole in the middle. And if you study sacred geometry, when all of the energy comes together and finally coalesces out of the Merkaba, that's what it creates is the Taurus. And that's what your brother was feeling. And, you know, um, uh, one of the reasons that some of the people who've been more successful at studying ley lines is they were in areas where they were on a path of a ley line between um, ley lines became defined in England because all of the cathedrals were on straight lines from each other. Mm -hmm. Now, the roads weren't straight line. If you've ever been in England, the roads are not straight. <laughs> That's but, like Boston the same way. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Like it's yeah. cow paths with attitude. It's built on cow paths. That's right. um, but they, <laughs> there, there are these lines that connect it. And when they've dug in these areas or as they've gone along these lines, archaeologists go along these lines because these lines connect holy sites that go all the way back to the Mesolithic. Yeah, and they're, you know, stone hinges on some of these and, you know, and so they're out on um, these where maybe one ley line's going to the next cathedral. And they've started following it. And they realized that this energetic force moved on the planet. It moved, mm -hmm. it, it shifts, it changes, just like yeah. we do. Just like we and do. And the intensity of what you get from this change, shifts and changes. And, you know, for some people, it would be great for them to go to a place like Sedona where they can kind of get blown away in the energy and for other people that would be so overwhelming that it, it can shut them down. I agree with that. Yeah. We, uh, when we went up through it, we were banging a drum. We were doing sort of a sacred Indian, you know, mm -hmm. thing. We, and, and we actually had a peace pipe. We were smoking the peace pipe with um, mullen. Is it mullen? M-U-L-L-I-E-N. I think it is, which mm -hmm. is, is a kind of plant. Um, it was just a magical experience, and it was it was wonderful to share it with him because he didn't live too many years after that. Mm -hmm. and, you know that he had that that whole entire experience was wonderful. But there's lots of places that can do that. Um, there are places in sacred sites, for instance, mm -hmm. that, you know, bring you feeling as though you're uplifted in your vibration. So, right. The, in the ley lines and in the dragon lines, they say that there are spots that are like our chakras in our body mm -hmm. and they, they go around the planet and all that's uh, shifting and changing. And if you watch the earlier candle things that talked about, you know, that um, Rory Duff and the people who are working with those energetics are creating a website that would be interactive. And so if you had like, you have groups where you meet and you do meditations and things, they, they deal with group meditations because singular meditation is important to get yourself centered right. so you can right. focus on what's going on and make decisions for yourself. But group meditations are extremely powerful in shifting all the energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So going off and being the, 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 the typical thing when I was in college, the little guru on the top of some mountain somewhere that everybody went up to and asked questions to, that's not, that not that what we period. are anymore. Yeah. Well, for that period of time and the kind of consciousness we had, that worked. But now we, th there's an answer out there. And unfortunately, it's probably us. So we're just going to have to figure it out. You're know? absolutely right. I feel the same way. Um, I think that, uh, you know, while those people brought us some great information like Alan Watts and, and others, um, you know, the, and, and Osho and great information but the fact that they were venerated as gurus 
Mm -hmm. was not really good for them or us because it put them in a higher position, whereas we're really all just the same. Yeah. And so, you know, that's another reason why we watch other shows and why we do other things because we want to learn. And that's, that's, uh, at least we know we, we got the message, you know, that this yeah, is what we need it, to do. Mm -hmm. It's difficult for you. Or I don't know if, is, if it, man, I'm presuming, I know it's difficult for me when people come in like, Oh, it's so easy for you to do these things. Well, first of all, <laughs> and second of all, you know, if if you just wait for me to solve your problems, that's never going to happen. Yeah. You know, or or for me to help you figure out what is the point that you should be working at. That's not that's not my job. Correct. Correct. You know, Everybody has to work on their own stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's whereby other, and, and that's what you meant also when you're saying people will come from a different place, but it's the same area. There are a lot, a lot of paths to the same place. And right. you know, we, that's been said by many other people, but yeah, it could be that, you know, you're interested in this and you study this, but then this comes in mm -hmm. and, and this is much more interesting to you or works better for you. Yeah, well, that's, I read from the age of 12 until I was 69, I did cards primarily and, and oracle mm -hmm. cards. I studied astrology. I studied all the things around it because it was referenced in there, but it wasn't a deal. I didn't see a stone. I didn't see a crystal grid until September of 2018. Wow. I'd never seen one. And it just became, all of a sudden, I knew I needed to know how to do this. It became what I needed to know how to do. And then I went, I studied it and I didn't build one until February of 2019 and mm -hmm. it worked. Yeah. And I was like, cool. okay. Well, I got one. My husband's got one and it's, it's wonderful. It's right over the door in the mm -hmm. office. And now uh, we have had some really good, good things happen. So we opened the office on 11, 11. See numbers mean something to me. Mm -hmm. And we're having our grand opening on 2, 2, 2022 at 202 yes <laughs> yeah why not if you can why choose not? why not choose right if you can <laughs> yeah. i read with an astrologer and she'll go okay what day do you want me to do this and yeah. she wasn't in love with the full moon she said we should have started this in the new moon and i said yeah but i'm too sick to start now i'm gonna right. my year really started with the full moon that's when i got my energy back from having had covid um right and so you celebrated. Yeah. Ah, so I celebrated. I said, we're going to go ahead and move forward like those four weeks didn't happen. Right. Right. You know, uh -huh. yeah. but, uh, and they, they almost didn't, you know, I try to remember what was going on in that time. And it, there's like, it's like, I was, Foggy, huh? mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. That's kind of scary in a way. But, well, um, I owe someone yeah. a grid and I did the reading for, and I went back and looked at the reading. The reading is totally valid. I have to get the strength up to, uh, put the stones okay. together. So your higher self just kicked in and took took over. Yeah. Is, I mean, yeah. not that it, it doesn't anyway, but yeah. Well, that's good. I, I really, I like that. Um, when I was uh, living in Florida um, is when I met my crystal stone teacher. Mm -hmm. And I had no interest in stones before. And she taught me everything that I needed to know about stones and more. And I remember buying the Melody book which is an older book that mm -hmm. has the metaphysical properties and, and right. it's still a beautiful book. But after that, whenever I went into a store, I would say, Oh, is that soda light? You know, Oh, this is this. And somebody would say, no, it's turquoise. I said, no, no, it's not because. Da -da 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 -da. And they're like, how do you know? <laughs> so it was really beneficial for me. I don't know everything about every stone, mm -hmm. but you know, it was a good basis and it stuck with me. And I didn't even real, really realize how much I was learning about it until I went into those situations. So yeah, sometimes you listen to it I enough. I'm fortunate I have a really good stone merchant near me. And they, right. if they have anything that's been dyed, colored, altered in any way, they make sure. They don't want it. Yeah. yeah, no, they make sure you know it is so that they're not selling right. you something that isn't legitimate to what you want to do. Because that's important to me to have the mm -hmm. legitimacy. Of sure. I agree with you. The product. Because there are places that sell like slab marble or slab mm -hmm. glass. And, you know. And they don't really tell you that that's what it is. And it is. It's mm -hmm. not a stone. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, and there's, you know, there's some, and there are stones I've seen a lot. Well, I've, I've done shows on fake stones or altered stones. Now, some stones can be altered. Uh, a woman, the way we started this, she had a chance to buy a ruby, but they said, we have to tell you in good faith that it's been sealed with the glass that they use in like stained glass windows because it ends up the red that's in stained glass windows has the exact same vibration as the red and rubies. And rubies are really, I know they look really hard and you think these stones are really hard. They're not as hard as you think and they can break. And this treatment actually makes it a better stone. And because of the way it was treated, it's not going to alter the energetics of the stone. And I told her, go ahead and get it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, there's a, there are people who make, opals there's a way that they can mix the chemicals to make opals and they don't if they don't tell you and you don't know what maya got pulled from the stuff you won't know but there's there's some stones that are just best to go to a really honest dealer or someone that you feel that's why when people say where can i get stones online i'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> no i don't I, the only thing I can't I buy out much online is the um, octahedron fluorites. There's a guy who's had, he used to have a really good source out of China. I'm hang, clinging on to my last two bags of my octahedron. They're beautiful. I yeah. love their energy. Yes. Oh, I love beautiful. fluorites. Fluorites will fluoresce under a black light too. Somebody. They will? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. That's why they're called fluorites because they fluoresce. Okay. All right. Maybe I thought maybe they had them. fluoride in them or something. No, well, <laughs> no. that's me. Okay. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so how, like I said, this thing is to get us to get heart centered and to learn to tie ourselves into energy. And I think we shouldn't kind of, well, I do this and I don't do that. Now you may do this and not do that, but you should at least have some kind of running knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. And it's fun to learn about it. it uh -huh. It's a new thing. And uh, it, it's like uh, right now doing the series with um, Andrea Galvin about shamanism. I've studied a lot of Native American, but uh -huh. I didn't study, you know, shamanism necessarily. And so I like the way she's put it all together. And she's put it in into um, words that we can understand and uh -huh. words that we can work with. And that's another thing. You don't want to be way up here talking when you know, you need, to, you don't have to be down here, but you can be even keel, you know, you can talk about it and it doesn't have to be, you know, over somebody's head, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, when you're bringing up, up the information. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up today was that um, number four is the mystical I Ching. Mm -hmm. And it says that that's where we abide, where danger lurk, lurks. Uh, I'm sorry, to abide where danger lurks is youthful folly. Mm -hmm. It is our sacred duty to correct the folly of youth through education. So there's a perfect segue there. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, we may think we know everything we need to know about something and either like it or not. Um, but if we educate ourselves, then we don't necessarily have to change our mind, but at least we know more than we did when we first started. So that's right. And the other thing is to, because of what's happening in this time right now, uh, some people are living from fear and they don't want to, they don't want to just, they don't want anything to change. They want to go back to something that first of all, didn't exist when they thought it existed. This and I was, alive, I was alive yeah. in the 1950s guys, a lot of stuff they're saying. And I grew up in, in incredible white privilege and it still is. A, uh -huh. I won't say the word I want to say, but it was, you know, and wasn't are, pretty. <laughs> no, it was, it, it you were as stifled by privilege as you were by lot lack. That's true. That's very true. You know, and yeah, and and the treatment. I mean, I like I wasn't alive during the McCarthy hearings, but I've spent a lot of time listening to some of those. And you know, they've been in in movies that we've watched, and uh, I'm just seeing repeating patterns like that coming up. Well, um, because that was based on hate and fear, and it was based on hate and fear. After World War II, when a lot of people came to the U.S. from Europe that had been displaced, my hometown was an industrial town in the Midwest, and it all the houses around me, all the kids had a grandmother who didn't speak English in the corner, 
I mean, it could maybe Polish, could be German, Hungarian. I mean, it could be all kinds, French even. Yeah. And, you know, but then, and then the, the parents spoke pretty decent English. And then the kids translated for everybody that were my age. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I remember I was dating this guy and he ended, he ended up marrying one of my good friends. And that was one of those marriages that didn't last nearly as long as I would have liked. But he... Um, I went in his house and he was one of the people that I had a grandmother in the corner and she said something and I don't, I don't even remember what language she spoke, but I think it was German. But mm -hmm. I said, um, I said, Alan, what, what, sh what'd she say? And he wouldn't tell me. And finally I badgered the crap out of him. So he finally told me and he goes, um, she's too skinny, not good for pulling plow. I mean, you know, what, okay. yeah, yeah. what middle-class Midwestern girl, what an attractive <laughs> thing. Yes, I'm too skinny to pull the plow. Yes, that's my way of living. That's but right. All our vibrations change, and we're in, we're in a time of incredible change. And, you know, if the one thing that I've had to kind of warn some people about is if you try to go backwards and grab backwards and pull someone up who isn't moving, you can't do that for anyone. I couldn't do it for them. I've had people who've said, well, surely, you know, I'm going to get a grid for my friend. And I said, no, your friend needs to call me. I need to talk to them. It's like when I built your right. house, you That's wanted right. to be there, but I had to do it with him. And you, you can't, you can't build the grid for somebody else. They have to right. actively participate and they have to acknowledge that's what they really want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the same way with uh, praying for somebody or, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can't take away their free will. So, no. yeah, and they have to be ready. Everybody has to be ready for whatever it is. And so, yes, it's important for them to reach out and not you like you say you'd end up pulling your back out if you tried to pull somebody up from behind well, worse than that it's like pull your vibration down i that's true i've been yeah. um i've been studying dowsing and i've been danny and i are working on a project <laughs> about creating a dowsing grid so you can check your own personal vibration because it's all well and good for you and i just say go increase your vibration and then people go huh i know <laughs> i know how do you do that yeah, oh, what? And actually, I found like there were days when I would wake up and I'd think, no, I feel really good today. And I'd go check. I have a vibration diary and I would check and it wasn't nearly as high as I thought it was, but it was good for me to think it was high. Then I'd go find a crystal or a stone. Mm -hmm. I'd meditate a little longer and then I'd get my vibration up. But I can tell you how to crash your vibration. I was showing this to some friends of mine that I test things out on. And I was showing them how to, that we were working on a technique to get the pendulum to swing and to go into, be programmed to go into certain parts of this. And they were watching me do it. And I was like, got up to a thousand vibrations, which is really, really good. And I was sitting there and going, isn't that great? And then my phone kept ringing because scam likely, you know, that person that that's named. Yes, they call it. all the time. Did yeah. you notice? Yeah. Yeah. So finally I said, well, I can't take it. They're just, this is one of those ones where they're just, you're on a rotation. They're going to do it. So I picked it up and I started talking to the guy and I said, don't call me. I don't want to hear from you. And so he started yelling at me in Tagalog. He was in the Philippines and I knew what he was. I knew the language. I don't know to speak it, but I understood. Right. It. I but you understood it was Tagalog. And I and so it, it just, it just hit the wrong button on me, girl. And I basically told him to STFU and, mm -hmm. you know, and I smashed the phone down. He didn't call me. I mean, I did get off their list, but my friend said, oh, do your vibrations now. I had dropped 500 points. Oh, I believe that. You know, yeah, that, yeah it's amazing. And um, watch the news it. sometime and do it. And do it. Do, have you ever read David Hawking's book? Hawkins, rather. He has a lot of books that do muscle testing. Right. He's the one who came up with the, the whole dowsing. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did. Yep. Yep. And they're fascinating, especially for those of you who are have a more scientific way of looking at things, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's he measured all like he, he measured um, Catholicism and Protestantism, he, everything, mm -hmm. everything he could think of. He measured and it was really awesome. Some of the things and he really... You know, and one of the things that a lot of the people are talking, they're becoming aware of the shift or saying is mm -hmm. science is not keeping up with us. 
we understand these things are happening and we're following them and we're measuring them. Um, one of the people who says that is, is Rory Duff. And he was talking about how he measures these ley lines. He douses, he does all this stuff to follow it. And he's working with a lot of other biologists and geobiologists and geologists. And he said, we're going to have to let science go at some point because it can't keep up with us. And it's just what it is. And um, I, we you said- can't measure I, something you can't see either. Well, I guess you can, but- you, Well, there are going to be ways to do it, but they're not, I mean, they want- They're not, they're not doing it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but yeah. when I was talking with um, Intuitive Kim about it, Intuitive You, Kim, she was yep. saying that, you know, but so many things like the the light that shines in the bedroom where she sees the orbs now. She said those orbs have been always around her. She knew there was something there. She couldn't see it, but because of that funny little light, she can now identify them and can relate to them and they become more significant. But, you know, for a bunch of us, it's been there since long before they could measure, before there was a tool, before there was anything. And you need to let your body be your guide. True. Well, we've, we've moved away in the past from our gut reaction mm -hmm. because people didn't value it. And so, but it's always been, it's always been spot on. We just didn't pay attention to it as much as we yeah, that's are doing now. The, yeah. the brain that's on our heart. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I just saw on um, a YouTube channel, it was, a, it was amazing. It was a, a, a dog had crossed over. Uh, mm -hmm. like an hour or two beforehand. And there was a woman that was videotaping her cat mm -hmm. who knew the dog. And she was doing this to something that was in front mm -hmm. of her. And I thought, are cats also, are animals also escalating? They must be. Well, you know, they, or we just were didn't notice it. I think they were ahead of us in the first place. In the first place. We just didn't notice it and mm -hmm. take take stock of what or we was just going thought on. they were being a crazy little critter crazy yeah <laughs> i know it was awesome i thought it was so cute honestly wow well and we just need to be we need to open ourselves up to this we need to think about it and and not ignore it and you know it's it, it's like when i started with andrea about her, the group she's creating because this website's not only going to be about ley lines and that kind of energy it's going to be the sort of dream groups and those sort of groups and you know in some cultures people wake up in the morning and that's what the family discusses is what did you dream last night or they do it within communities what did you dream last night and that's a way that people can validate and you'll get this little bit that you could relate to and you'll get this little bit that you could relate to and you can put the whole thing together right that's what and the, prophetic, the prophetic dreams are the ones that are the most interesting. And a lot of people don't recognize them until much later. I remember once having a dream. Um, I was sitting in an old fashioned funeral carriage and I was mm -hmm. up in the front with my dad and my brother. And I have mm -hmm. another brother. He wasn't there. And I read that as something was going to happen to one of those guys. Mm -hmm. And no, my mother died the day after that. And so oh. we were all together. And so I knew right. that, but you don't know that at the time, but it sure is interesting to keep track of those kinds of things because yes. they really do tell you what's going on. Well, yeah. and I think if you don't know what synchronicity means, it means something keeps coming up and coming up and coming up. And finally you say, oh, maybe I should pay attention to this. And I had a synchronicity on a skin cancer and mm -hmm. I saw for months things about getting checked for skin cancer. Well, I only had one, I only had one mole in my whole little chubby body and it had been checked in August and this was February and it looked fine. You know, I mean, it was decent dermatologist. So all of a sudden I, I asked my daughter, I said, are you getting notices on Facebook about, you know, spring's coming, do da, 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 and get a good hat because of skin cancer. And she's looking at me like, okay, mom. Uh, whatever. <laughs> and she said, no, I, I haven't gotten anything about potentially getting skin cancer. And so I, um, I, then the next week 
I opened up an email and there was a hospital near me where I had to go on a Saturday anywhere near where it was going to be. And they're doing f- free skin cancer screenings. And I thought, yeah. okay, well, okay, I'm going to give into this. I'm just going to go. And I went and in, they had changed my diet to, because I had, had very low thyroid and we'd increased my thyroid and apparently it increased whatever was going wrong with that mole. And I was, if, if I had waited another couple of months, I would have had systemic melanoma. Yep. And so Listen I went. To those messages, that's good. Oh, yeah. So and I you. got a friend of mine who knew the profession. She got me in. We got it all taken care of. I got, that was in May. And by June, I had it removed. And, you know, it looked like a shark at the back of my calf for a while, but, you know. Made for interesting. Better than having skin cancer. <laughs> oh, better better than yeah. having systemic melanoma. You need to know yeah. number. That's yeah. what killed John John McCain. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Melanoma. Yeah. Once it gets in your system, it can pop up in organs. I mean, anywhere. It's nothing you want to screw with. So, needless to say, I get to go see the skin doctor once a year and get checked over completely. But and nothing's ever come back. But that was to me was one of the most clear. Yeah, God, the universe, they must the universe must be getting really bored and saying, man, we're just gonna let her go. I mean, she's not listening to us. I, I well, that's what they did for me. I pulled a card just before everything went kafuz for me in December, mm-hmm. and it said, You are in the 11th hour. And I said, Okay. And I thought, well, you know, for what? But then when I tested my blood sugar and it was 400 and something Jeez. in the morning. Uh, I was in the 11th hour. If I had you not were? listened to that and taken my blood and done something right away, I could have had diabetic um, You could have diabetic coma, and that's not... Yeah, yeah. so you really got to take care of yourself. But don't. Li- though every message comes, if we listen to it, we will recognize that it's a message, and it comes from all different places. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Wow. So our words of wisdom to everybody today is make sure you know where your blood sugar is. <laughs> <laughs> Get your skin cancer. Get oh, your skin yeah. check. Don't if don't screw around about skin cancer. And, don't be um, afraid though. Just just make sure you yeah. get the message and go do it you know not just because we're two old ladies that like to talk about maladies <laughs> uh, yeah you know and that's fine we're the people people should talk to because we've been through them uh, well we have but a lot of times you know a lot of people will say oh those old people they're always talking about all their problems you know with <laughs> and i i think to myself okay but wisdom wisdom speaks you know but you so. not only that but you and i are discussing the solutions we're saying this is that's how true you very true so we're not sitting here saying and it's never gonna change that's right. We're we are not our mothers. We are not our mothers. No. Um, which reminds me, have you seen um, the Sex and the City ladies just came out? And they are mm-hmm. the same age as the Golden Girls were when they first came out. And if you oh, really? take one and look beside the other, they're the same age. Mm-hmm. You can see that people are younger looking now mm-hmm. at, at an age than they were then. So oh, I, yeah. I, I love that when I saw that. I thought that was great. <laughs> yeah, I know. My doctor last year went and I had some heart things and we finally decided because I have a cool, cool doctor. And she said, oh, I think it's your spirit guys that are playing with you. You know, you got to. Yes. Excellent called. doctor. Yeah, Excellent. So she really yeah. has, well, yeah. she'd eliminated everything physical and she goes, what the hell are you working on? And it's when I was doing the garden and the eggs and all that stuff all at once. Oh, yes. Yeah. And yep. she actually got all my old health records from the doctors before I went to her. And this was my second year with her. And she looked it over and she goes, well, by all the medical measures we have, you're aging backwards. That's what you said. And I think that's fabulous. And Honestly, you can do that. that. You, you can do that if you open yourself up and and don't bury your the the harm in your in your right. system. Yeah, yeah, let it go. Yeah. Letting those toxins go and all the other things. Uh, mm-hmm. That's fabulous. Wow. That's, and I, that's you know, a I good would, thing. 
I can't tell you how to do that, guys. I, I know a lot of it had to do with losing a lot of weight, but also that helps. Yeah. Uh-huh. And right now I need to get out and do more activity. But as a friend sent me today on a Facebook post, and I don't go to Facebook often, but this was, um, I'm in Texas and we had a spot last week where it's 28 degrees in the morning. Then two days later, it was 72 in the afternoon. I mean, it's like, it's not like climate. It's like Powerball numbers. It's just like you pick it what you want and throw it on here, right? That's right. No, you're right. Yeah, because we've had the same thing here. We had it never gets like negative fifteen mm-hmm. um, and snow and all that stuff. And then Keith says that uh, coming up over the weekend, we're supposed to be in the seventies here, summertime. So yeah, yeah and we're, we're going to be in the thirties, and I'm in Texas, which yes. is like the wrong end of the, the country opposite. for this. That's right. But you can't you can't deny climate change is oh, no. happening because it definitely is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I hate to tell people, but Gaia is an entity. There is a yes, geobiology to this planet. And man, we're just so lucky. She seems to be a relatively reasonable middle-aged woman instead of a recalcitrant <laughs> 15-year-old. Like, you're a lot of problems. Bye, humans. <laughs> How true is that? Wow, that's great. <laughs> well, Allie, what are you up to? What's your next big things to be working on? Well, let's see. I'm working today with uh, interdimensional healing at three o'clock. I have a um, Karen. She used to be sage healers. Mm -hmm. And then on tomorrow night, I have my mediums uh, come on at 2.30 Pacific time. And uh, oh, I'm going to be on uh, Helen's channel. Have, Have you met Helen? She's wonderful. She's Irish granny. Oh, I've I've seen her. I haven't You've seen I've her. Been, yeah, I, I, we're gonna yeah we're gonna be on on Friday. She uh, on her channel. We're gonna talk about Ghislaine Maxwell. Ooh. Now yeah. there's energy. I don't. That energy will age me quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's not in a good way. So we're gonna talk about that. And uh, she apparently has, I think, five or six John Doe's that she won't name. Um, mm-hmm. that, because it would implicate them, but she's given that up. So I'm, I, that's kind of where I wanted to go with it. Is it five or see. six? I thought it was eight. Maybe I mean, it I'm, is. Maybe it is. Knows. Like Trump is a given and a few others probably, like mm-hmm. Andrew. Yeah. Somebody else said that she had a, um, she was having an affair, spending a lot of time with Prince Andrew as well back, mm-hmm. back in the day. I, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, his nickname when I was a young person, because he's in my generation, was Randy Andy. Randy Andy, yeah. He was and, a busy uh, guy. Yeah. Well, he didn't drop too far from the tree. His father was quite a runabout, too. You know, and my yeah, my second husband crowd. was my yeah. second husband was English. And uh-huh. he said he said they're all corrupt, they're all awful, and we ought to be rid of them. But yeah, they still haven't gotten there. But well, they're getting there yeah. probably more quickly than they knew. The queen, the queen, she reduced his, he has no titles left. She's taken away mm-hmm. some of his castles and his, they've left him with an income of 330,000 pounds. And somebody in England said that wouldn't even cover his legal costs. And, you know, I did not know this, that he lives with Sarah Ferguson, even though they're divorced. Oh yeah. If they know. never, they never, never they, split up. Yeah, because the queen insisted on it because there were pictures of her and all the tabloids of being with strange men. That's true. Having her so her toes sucked, didn't yeah. she? One of them, I think. <laughs> yes, I think so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sorry so, about the visual. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> anyway, to, on to brighter things. These people yes. are these are the people who are going to either change or um, not change and. You know, when the they're going to get lost, come, they're yeah. going to get lost. They're going to get lost. They will. Just like all these other folks that um, uh, COVID is thinning out some of those folks as well. Um, or, you know, they, they're not going to change. But some of the others, uh, what really doesn't make any sense to me is people who won't get the shot, then they get COVID, but now they still won't get the shot. And I just, I guess I just don't understand why they wouldn't do that after would they want to go through it again? Well, it's the same thing. You know, they'll use all these medicines that are full of really hideous, awful stuff. 
And yeah. but then they won't take something that's from a pharmaceutical. It's I grew approved. Up that, right. I grew up in a medical household and I actually worked in labs to get through college. Uh-huh. And that, that whole subject just makes me nuts. And, you know, when I ended up with COVID, I had been so careful since February of 2020. And the first time I went out and did a real life thing. I know. I know. That's where I got it, you know. Yeah. And, but Omicron is... There were very catchy 65 to 70 people at that party and all of them had been vaccinated and all stuff. And it ends up, they found the one woman who was sort of ground zero. She didn't know she had it. She'd gone. She didn't know till Sunday morning after the party was Saturday night, she came home and got a notice from her work that they'd all been exposed to COVID. And so she went that afternoon and found a pharmacy where she could get a test and she was positive. She let the hostess know right away. We knew it was potential. There were 60, 65 to 70 people in that house. And by Christmas, 45 of us had been diagnosed with COVID. Oh, my Lord. Look at how it swept through that house. That's wow. more virulent than measles. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. So, But what's going to happen is the universe is going to do what the universe is going to do. And you, our people watching, are responsible for your responses to it, to how you take care of it. Mm-hmm. you know, how you deal with it. And uh, we're, we're trying to get everybody back to this more heart centered love understanding and coming the, to face the times of change because times of change can either pull us forward to some either great new thing or maybe not such a great new thing. I mean, think about poor Jeffrey Ripe color of right of oh, Ripe color. Yeah. His, his, you know, his apartment's gone. The world his, went up in smoke. Yep. Awful. Yeah. I talk to him. I talk to him almost every day because he and I do side by side readings, and we're working out how we're going to do those. If you don't know, that's my other thing that I do. We do a free. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do. Reading. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, but yesterday he picked it up, and he he said he just decided he wasn't going to be the victim, and he was going to do healing things, and he's sounding better. But and he can he could not be more grateful for how the community. Oh, I know. Rally. Yeah. Community's been. The response has been fabulous, and I, I couldn't thank people enough for loving him the way they have. So, yeah. 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 And, yeah. you know, and he said, I just going to have to make some changes. You know, I mean, I, it, although his, they're they're already working on re, rehabbing the building. Oh, I had no idea. That's good. I guess. Yeah, they already had the contractors over, and they've decided what needs to get done, and they've had the code people in, because what caused the smoke was uh, somebody's lithium battery blew up in their, in their computer because they didn't have correct wiring. Okay. It was, he said it was an old wooden building. So that makes sense. Yeah. And it's an old wood. Well, he heard the boom and then he thought, well, he thought it sounded like something hit the building from outside. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was going to roll over and go back to sleep. And he looked over and there was smoke curling up through the floors and he's, he barely got out. It, I know he, he still did. has. He said, I kind of like what it did to my voice. I said, you sound like Lauren Bacall, hon. He said, I love that. Yeah. But not for that reason. No. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. so, you know, I mean, you know, we all have those things around us. We do. Room. And how you look at it is is part of how well you are resilient. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what Jeffrey is. He's mm-hmm. resilient. Yeah. He's and it's well. not easy. Yeah. No, it's not. Does he have somewhere to live, Nancy Jean? Right he's now? got friends he's staying with in Brooklyn okay. right now, and he has several really nice offers from people of places to move uh, if he just wants to go there temporarily. Yeah. Um, and he's not, he's just not sure which, what he's going to pick. Um, the only reason, well, he talks to me every day because I told him, I put his, I have a thing on my phone where I can block numbers. So at night, yeah. he can't call me. He can call me and my kids can call me and I have a couple of friends, but nobody else can get through. So I was talking to him at 11 o'clock my time last night, which is midnight, his time. And he's still sort of, you know, figuring it out. But, um, you know, I'm, I was so proud of how the community responded to that, to our you know, definitely. Helping. It was beautiful. It really was. Um, they were saying one place had like 17,000 at the time they checked. And that wasn't even PayPal. That was his GoFundMe page. Mm-hmm. So I'm just so impressed. I think that's fabulous. Yeah. And, you know, and people, a lot. we do a lot of work like this presentation, which is, it's monetized on YouTube. Guys, trust me, that's not going to be <laughs> 
But um, mm-hmm. people need to understand that we, you know, we work at this stuff and we're here for you. And, you know, I'm, I'm so glad to see them respond that way because there's no telling. Definitely. Yep, there is. Yeah, all of us are here because we were called here and we love what mm-hmm. we do or we wouldn't be here, I don't think, especially yeah. the introverts. <laughs> but yeah. 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 Cool. And so with that, we bless everyone and we're going to go back to the candles and blow them out. I do this because people think they don't need to blow them out. And you do. You do. There we go. So they're out and um, I will post post this on your day which is okay <laughs> sending you a heart nancy jean yeah i love that i love that stone i love that that crystal it's a nice one it it's is. a beautiful one and i thank everyone who's come to join us today and this will be set up as a premiere and i'll let you know when it is Allie. Hey, nancy jean okay. thank you for asking me to come this time i'm thrilled i had a oh no time. i mean you know i had put you last time mm-hmm. i invited people and just everybody glommed on like immediately and i by the time you wrote me which wasn't was, any well, left yeah. yeah i said oh, <laughs> oh well yeah, I'm but anyway uh-huh. everyone okay. take care and take care of yourself and take care of those you love and take care of your thoughts because our thoughts become our reality Bless you. bye-bye Bye-bye.